Okay, hello and welcome to this presentation on A-Level History of Art. Over the next 10-15 minutes, I'm hopefully going to answer many of the questions that you might have about an A-Level in History of Art, what the course entails, what do you study on an A-Level in History of Art, and perhaps more importantly, what can you do with an A-Level in History of Art as well. So I'm going to talk about all of those things, um, why it is such a, a fantastic opportunity to kind of study this particular A-level and how it might fit in with your other plans as well. And hopefully that will answer um, the majority of questions that you might have. But if you do have further questions, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with the college or with me directly. And I'll be more than happy to answer them for you as well. Um, I'm going to start off just with a brief introduction about me, what I do in the college and what my role is, and then we'll kind of get into the presentation itself. So my name is Timothy Wynn. Um, I've been at Hillsborough for quite some time now, um, and I'm actually the head of art and design at Hillsborough Six One College. So that's my role, and I'm in charge of three A levels, including history of art, but also art, design, art and design, and photography as well. So that's kind of what I do. Um, I'm the sole teacher of history of art, so I'm in charge of it. Um, so if you do have questions specifically about history of art, then I'm the person to kind of come to with those questions. And as I said, I'm hopefully going to be able to answer a lot of those questions as we move into the presentation. So let's get straight into it. So I'm just going to open up my PowerPoint and we'll get going. OK, so I'm just going to start off by talking about what a unique opportunity studying A-level history of art is. It's a relatively small subject nationwide. I think there are about a thousand students that sit history of art every year um, in the country. So to study it at A level is quite a unique opportunity. To find a centre that offers it is quite unique as well, because I think in the sixth form sector, there's maybe three, maybe four sixth form colleges that offer it, along with a kind of smattering of private schools as well. So the fact that you can actually do A level history of art here is a great opportunity for those of you who are obviously interested in art, enjoy the kind of idea of going to galleries, learning more about artists and their often very interesting and colourful lives, I hasten to add as well, um, as well as developing really good core analytical skills. And I'll talk a little bit more about what skills you'll gain from History of Art later on in the presentation. But I will just kind of say from the outset, great opportunity to study it at sixth form level. Um, there's not many opportunities to do it. So if it is something that interests you, it is definitely worth considering. Um, just moving on to my next slide now, um, just throwing this out there just to show really the sheer variety of the things that we study. So in terms of what do we study at a very general level in history of art, it's not just painting. Sometimes people think it is just looking at paintings, um, but it's not. We look at a wide range of artists and a wide range of works and it's painting, sculpture and architecture as well. And it's worth noting that architecture makes up about a third of the course, I would say. So it's a great opportunity for potential architects. Um, and in fact, I've had students who have done A-level history of art and gone on and studied architecture and come back and been really grateful of the grounding that history of art gave them. And it certainly gave them some advantages um, moving forward into their studies of architecture um, post sixth form. Um, we also look at kind of a whole range of eras as well. So it's painting, sculpture, architecture, along with things like installation and assemblage art and ready-made art. Um, if you don't know what some of those terms mean, don't worry, because these are the kind of things that you will learn on the course. But it's a wide range of eras as well. So perhaps unlike a history A level where you're specialising in a particular period, the first year in history of art will cover quite a broad range of topics. So if you've always been interested in kind of ancient Greek art, you'll get the opportunity to look at that as well as Renaissance art or medieval art, as well as kind of maybe modern art and postmodern art and so on and so forth. So we're looking at quite a broad spectrum in the first year with a broad range of artists. So there is certainly something for everybody in the mix there. Um, I'll talk a bit more specifically now about what you will be doing in the course and how it kind of works, if you like, and then unpack that a little bit more in the next few slides as well. So this is going to be a real focus on what do we actually study? What skills will you particularly learn in an A-level in history of art? Well, looking at this first slide here, you can see it says unit one 
themes. And basically, unit one is what you'll spend most of your first year doing, in fact, all of your first year doing. And it's broken down into two sections, section A and section B, which you can see on the slide there. Section A is visual analysis and interpretation. And this is really giving you the foundation skills of an art historian. This is teaching you to look and interpret what you're looking at. And I'll talk a bit more about that on the next slide. The other component of unit one is the thematic study in art history. And studying themes is very much in vogue at the moment in terms of history of art. So rather than just studying a long list of kind of chronology or periods from year dot to now, um, actually the way that it's taught particularly in the first year is very much kind of thematically so we're looking at two key themes out of a choice of three um, we choose to look at nature in art and we look at war in art there is a third one identities but we don't touch upon that particular thing because we only need to do two of them and um again i'll talk a little bit more about what that involves in a couple of slides time um, unit one is then examined. It's worth 50% of the overall exam and it's a three hour exam, which is essay based. And it's probably an appropriate time at this stage to say that art history doesn't have any coursework involvement in it. It is purely assessed on exam at the end of the course. So one of the things that I'll we'll certainly be doing in art history is teaching you how to write good, structured, analytical essays. Um, to talk about how to approach these essays, how to structure them, as I mentioned, um, what that involves in terms of planning, preparing, um, and enhancing your written skills, particularly under timed conditions, is a big part of the skills that you will learn. So um, don't worry that you will maybe, that's not necessarily a strong point at this stage. It is something that I will take you through as we progress through that course. So I'm going to move to the next slide now and just dip into those sections of unit one in a little bit more depth to explore what they are and what you'll be doing. So, as I said, the first section of unit one is visual analysis and interpretation. That's what it's called. And the whole idea of this is that it's giving you the skills to look and to interpret from what you are seeing. And what this really involves is what we would call in art history a formal analysis and that's being able to come to an artwork be it a painting a sculpture or a piece of architecture indeed and actually being able to decipher to be able to kind of understand it um, visually and to be able to interpret from what you're looking at and the questions that I'll be training you on here will involve things like analysing composition, analysing light and tone, looking at how an artist has used space. Um, in sculpture, we'll be examining materials and what impact they have on a particular piece of work. In architecture, we will talk often about stylistic features, what are the um, components of a building that allow us to identify a particular style. So, for example, with the piece of architecture there, it's a Gothic cathedral. You may well have guessed that. But how do we know it's a Gothic cathedral? What are the kind of identifying kind of features in that building that allow us to understand it? With architecture, we often talk about form and function as well. So looking at how the look of a building, the structure of a building, the features of a building help us to kind of understand what its purpose is. So, for example, this is a very large cathedral designed to really inspire or um, to make you look up to the heavens and in a very practical sense fit a lot of people the congregation into a space um, and so these are the kind of things that we'd be looking at within a kind of visual analysis section of the course and as I said earlier it's really giving you the toolkit of an art historian the ability to look and understand um, in a very objective fashion what it is that's in front of you and what we can take away from that. And this is a great skill to practice in galleries, in museums, when you're stood in front of an artwork and actually having those tools is a really enriching experience because you can then start to kind of take it apart and understand it more. And I think that's a really um, rewarding experience. And one thing I will say is that I think one of the, the areas that art history really sells itself is that it's it's all around us you know we live in a very visual world don't we and to understand that world more so by having these tools and it doesn't take long to acquire these particular skills can really enrich your experience and i know that students who have learned about architecture and the features of architecture um, 
have often come back and said they've been walking around Cambridge and suddenly they kind of see you know the Doric order from the Greek architecture there on the kind of Fitzwilliam building or something along those lines um, and they can suddenly take it apart and that really is a kind of rewarding experience to kind of understand what you're seeing much more um, and it's not just in kind of older buildings it's in kind of advertising it's in things we see on our kind of devices our phones you know we're always being invaded by images and we live as i said in a very visual world so to be able to understand that and to see how you know images work on all kinds of levels um, and how we respond to them is a really kind of rewarding experience so i think i've mentioned enough about that so i'm going to move on to the next kind of slide here which as you can see talks a little bit about the themes so the two themes which are nature and war are the key themes that we'll be looking at and the way this works is we will look at a series of case studies from a range of eras um so it's quite enriching in that sense that we're not kind of just stuck in one period at this stage in the course but are looking at a, a range of artists both pre-1850 and post-1850 so the exam board really wants us to look at a variety of artists um, and we're looking at how they've explored the theme of nature. Um, how have artists kind of over the years developed things like approaches to landscape painting or seascape painting, as you can see in this image by Turner there. How has our relationship to nature been talked about, discussed in artworks? Um, and the wonderful thing about this section of the course is it's not just Western art that we're kind of concerned with, the canon of art, if you like, uh, as established in what we might call a European tradition, but we're very much encouraged to look much more broader than that. And I think that's a really fantastic aspect of this course, is we're also looking at non-Western artists, we're looking at artists globally, um, how have they kind of tackled this from a, a range of eras, a range of cultures as well. So you're getting a very enriching experience looking at these artists. And one of the key differences between this and the first section of the course is the first section, which is purely focusing on much more formal elements of analysis. Here, those formal elements are still valid. Those tools are still being put into practice here. But actually, you're going to be looking at far more contextual elements as well. So this is where we'll get to delve into the context, the history, the impact influences, what was going on at the time, what's affecting the artist, the artist's personality, and so on and so forth. So we deepen our understanding much more by adding that contextual element into the mix. So in terms of both um, nature and war, they're the two components that we'll look at and a range of artists that will fulfill that criteria. Um, and it is two really fantastic areas of study and real fascinating areas of study as well. Moving on into unit two now. Now unit two changes slightly and this is principally the second year of the course, which is how it's divided up. So unit one, majority of which is taught in, in year one. And then unit two builds upon that experience. Um, but the key difference here is actually you're going to be looking at two distinct periods here. So whereas the first year thematic course jumps around quite a bit in terms of what you're looking at, so one minute we're in the Renaissance, next minute we're kind of in ancient Greece, and then we're kind of in kind of um, a more modern kind of era in the kind of 20th century. Here we're actually looking at two distinct periods, and this gives us a chance to kind of deep dive, if you like, into a particular era to gain much better understanding of what's going on and much deeper understanding of those key things that are affecting artists at the time. Um, so the first of the two periods that we look at is called the avant-garde in Britain and France, 1848 to 1899. So we're looking predominantly at the second half of the 19th century. And this is a really fascinating period of study because it's a time where artists are starting to become more independent, starting to challenge the authorities of art, the art academies, if you like, and starting to go it on their own. Um, they're starting to look at some of the incredible transformations that are happening around them in the modern world, which might be things like the Industrial Revolution, the increase in transport or leisure time, particularly if we're thinking about the Impressionists, which would come under this era as well, as well as radical new painters such as the Pre-Raphaelites, um, which is the painting you can see at the moment. 
moment. This is John Everett Millet's Christ in the House of His Parents, a more or a much more radical take on the um, on images of the Holy Family there. So you can see Mary and Jesus. And this was a, a much maligned image in its time, which is hard for us to imagine now. Um, but again, looking at art history really kind of unpacks some quite exciting discoveries about how art was accepted or rejected as the case may be through various eras. Um, so the second period that we study follows straight on and I need to move to my next slide for that actually because I do have a slide and this is called Brave New World Modernism in Europe and this covers the next kind of half century if you like so where the 19th century obviously kind of um, goes up to 1899 we pick up straight on uh, year 1900 and go through to 1939, so just before the Second World War, in our second um, period. And this is a very, very exciting period, and, and the students really do enjoy studying this, because again, this is an era of exciting changes, of exciting discoveries, and this is where we're looking at a whole range of movements going from kind of fauvism through to cubism, through to futurism, through to expressionism, um, ending up pretty much with surrealism um, and many more besides. And there's obviously a huge amount of transformation um, in this period as artists increasingly respond to the events, often dramatic events that are going on around them. Um, and following that through with an increased push towards abstraction. And I think that kind of summarizes the, the second year course in a way that is, it is the modern period that we are looking at. Um, so we are looking at that kind of mid to late 19th century into the kind of early 20th century. And the beauty of the second year course is it really allows us to get to grips with these very exciting artists um, who are responding to this rapidly transforming world around them um, and recording that in a way that's never been done before. So I think that is a, um, a really nice kind of area of study. So that's kind of what we study. I'm just going to move on into the next slides to answer some of the kind of the questions that we have or that you might have about the course. Um, and as I say, if I don't cover all of the questions that you might have, do feel free to contact me and I'll be happy, more than happy to, to answer them. Um, so the first slide, which um, is a big selling point of the course, is will there be any trips? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. I always feel that art can't be seen just in the classroom. That's not really the experience that we want from art, just looking in books or looking on a projector. Um, actually, it's out there. Um, we need to experience it. And so uh, as many opportunities as we can, we like to get out and we will visit local galleries. I've got good relationship with the Fitzwilliam. Um, so often they will do workshops for us uh, where obviously you're encouraged to stand in front of works and, and dissect them to practice those all important visual analysis skills. Um, we've done mini trips, if you like, to places like Ely Cathedral in the past to look at the architecture and do a tour of the cathedral from an architectural point of view. We've been to Kettle's Yard. Um, we've been to the Department of Classical Archaeology to look at their sculpture collection there. We are very blessed, if you like, in terms of the amount of resources that we have even on our own doorstep, not to mention, obviously, London is not too far away to get to. Um, and of course, we've done trips there to both Tate in the past, but also perhaps things that are a little bit off the beaten track, like the Wallace Collection, for example. Um, the Courtauld Institute has a really fantastic array of galleries as well. So there are plenty of opportunities, but perhaps most exciting is in the second year, um, you will get the opportunity to go on an international visit. Traditionally, that is Paris and has been for some years because Paris is just such an exciting place to be, particularly in terms of for studying the art of the 19th and 20th century. It's a very rich, resourced area with an incredible array of galleries to help us to kind of bring those periods alive to us. Um, and as I said, that normally would happen in the second year of the course. But in the past, we have run trips to Florence, we've run trips to Amsterdam um, and Berlin as well. We've also got plans for perhaps some visits to Barcelona within the art department, and then maybe opportunities to kind of hop on those as well. 
So very exciting opportunities to kind of get out and about for sure. Absolutely. And, and one thing I would add with that is that I'm very much about encouraging you to go out yourselves um, and take to take every opportunity to see art in the flesh in front of you, because there's nothing quite like that experience of being stood in front of something. So what skills will I develop? Um, I've hinted at this already. Um, and obviously the fundamental skill in art history is, as it says on there, is the ability to read and interpret images, analyze them both formally and contextually, and the ability also to put that into words, because obviously this is an essay based subject. Um, and I should say that unit two is also examined in the same way that unit one is. It's 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 50 percent of the overall A level. Um, and it is all examined through essay writing, both short answers and longer answers. So the training is very much about kind of pushing that. But, uh, you know, in terms of broader than that, it's about developing your confidence in the classroom as well to not only kind of write, but also to discuss and talk about art. So there's plenty of opportunities to kind of join in discussions, whether that's with a small group of people or with an, or in terms of a class discussion as well. Um, obviously, you know, presentation work forms part of that also, and I'm very much encouraging students to, to constantly kind of think about how they talk about art and giving you opportunity to practice and to teach each other as well about what you found out um, is also a really fantastic experience to push the, your learning forward um, and to develop your confidence as well um, with talking about art, as I mentioned. Um, so this is really kind of, you know, pushing research skills also. So there's a large part of art history about how you learn, how you kind of pick things up, how you kind of get that information into your head. Practicing those skills is a really kind of important part of that. So working independently, using books, journals, articles, but teaching you how to use those specifically, as well as you know, physical articles that I will give you and books that you will be given as well, as well as obviously the online articles also. Um, much of the course is also taught through watching little video excerpts. Um, we've got some very good kind of websites, um, also narrated PowerPoints now are all kind of part of that learning process. So moving, switching it slightly um, in terms of what skills you develop to kind of how will you learn, um, I would say a wide variety of ways. Um, it's not just me stud giving lectures every lesson, so uh, which would be rather dry, but actually you getting involved actively in your learning and thinking about how you learn is a really, really important factor in the history of art. Um, and I think it's probably worth mentioning at this stage because one of the most common questions I get is, well, how does this sit as a kind of portfolio of subjects to any given university? And I will say, Right from the onset, extremely well. History of art is a well-regarded humanities subject. Um, it is a subject that does hone good essay writing skills, good analytical skills, as I've already unpacked, hopefully. And therefore, it stands you in good stead for a wide variety of degree subjects, whether or not you went on and did history of art at degree level or any other subject. The skills are obviously very much transferable. Um, and so history of art is always going to be a good humanities to kind of have in the mix. Um, moving on from that, though, I would like to kind of emphasize that history of art is a skill for life. Um, it's not just about kind of getting you to the next academic level or the next stage of your education, but actually it's a high it, it's a it's a high level skill that will enrich your life you know, for years to come. Um, and on that kind of, you know, thought, it's a very, very valuable A-level because obviously it allowing you to kind of engage with the visual arts is a very rewarding and enriching, as I keep saying. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that people can see it more than just a commodity to get you to the next stage of education, but something that is truly with you for years to come. And I think that testimony to that is just the the enjoyment level that students genuinely have for the subject they do really fall in love with it often unexpectedly because nobody's done it at GCSE before some people have not really even thought about it until they've maybe come to an open day or an open evening talk to myself or some of the students 
um, and giving it a go and, and suddenly that's what they want to do with their life. Um, so it's very, very much a kind of, you know, not just jumping to the next stage of your education, or, although, as I've mentioned, it is highly regarded, as you can see in that slide there. Um, many admissions tutor um, do like art historians for the skills that they bring. Um, which leads on quite nicely to what we're calling creative futures here. And this, these next couple of slides are just really thinking about what you might go on and do with an A-level in history of art. And again, it's a very common question that I would get at open evening or open days is where does it lead? And it can lead in all kinds of directions. But if we think about the creative industries, which have... Um, multiplied massively over the last few years or so and the amount of kind of money that that's put into the creative in industries as well then there are many opportunities and, and you only need to think of kind of perhaps the museum and gallery sector to think about just how big that is you know institutions like not just galleries but also institutions like the national trust or english heritage um where jobs involving some element of kind of creativity, curatorship, or perhaps journalism, um, where a, a degree um, or a background in the visual arts would be extremely useful and advantageous. You only need to think about film and TV as well, where that might also be extremely advantageous as well, uh, also. So there's a huge array of potential for kind of career direction. Um, and this next slide just lists Quite, you know, careers where students have gone on after kind of art history, I would say maybe about half of my art historians in any one year would go on and do a degree in art history or something related to the visual arts. And these are the kind of areas where they might end up, and I'm not going to read them out, you can see them for yourself there, but there is a wide array of potential direction. And as I mentioned earlier, even if you're not pushing forward into the creative or visual arts, after sixth form, then the transferable skills, the analytical skills, the essay writing skills, the research skills that you're going to pick up in an A-level in history of art are obviously going to be useful moving you forward in whatever direction you want to go in. Um, so, you know, there's all kinds of things in the mix there. Um, and, you know, this is just a slide that kind of, you know, that talks a little bit about the idea of progression. So progressing into successful creative career areas is a popular choice for our students. And we do support them massively. This is mentions portfolios there and foundation courses. That's not potentially the usual direction for art historians. That's perhaps more related to art. Um, one thing I will just pick up on here is that. Um, we do have a lot of students who do do the art and design A-level and then do the art history as well. Um, there's not an overlap there. The art and design A-level is obviously the practical kind of A-level, so making things, the creativity. Art history is much more the humanities essay based, so there's no practical work involved in an A-level in history of art. So the two complement each other really, really well. But I would like to kind of point out that about half of our students in art history don't do art and design. Um, they come from all kinds of backgrounds. So in terms of subject combinations, there's all kinds of mixtures in the class. Obviously, it pairs well with other humanities subjects. So if you think about English, film studies, history um, are quite common. But we do have students who may be doing two sciences and history of art as well. So it does sit alongside a variety of other subjects and is not necessarily one right combination that involves history of art and as i said it's quite common for visual art students who are doing art and design um, a level or in photography a level to do history of art as well because um, it complements those subjects obviously very very successfully so i thought i'd mention that um, we are on to frequently asked questions but i'm hoping i've managed to um, answer most of these but let's have a quick look so that first one says, what do I need to know to be able to do the subject before taking it? Well, history of art is a completely new subject at A-level. You don't do a GCSE in history of art. Um, so your background or exposure to it may be very, very limited. Um, you may have had parents who have dragged you around galleries all your life and kind of exposed you to it more than others. Um, brilliant, that's fine. But if it, that's not the case, but you're genuinely interested, then that's also fine. The course assumes no knowledge. So when you first come in, 
um, I will literally take you through the first steps um, and beyond, um, assuming that you are not or that you haven't got that kind of background knowledge in the mix. Um, so it really is a kind of fresh start as an A-level. And that's quite a nice thing in a way to kind of actually start something where you're all on the same level. Um, there's no one that's kind of got any advantage etc um, it really is kind of taking it from no knowledge onwards so you'll learn very very quickly and there will be a steep learning curve to start with um, but you'll soon get used to that um, as the skills become more apparent and you practice them more and more um, so you know in terms of we, we do ask for written subjects um, to be in the mix of your kind of portfolio of sub GCSEs that you are offering. So we'd, we'd like to see, obviously, you're all doing English, um, but history as well. So that, you know, they are obviously quite useful indicators of your essay writing ability um, as such. But like I say, even if essay writing perhaps isn't necessarily your, your strongest kind of skill, um, it is something that we will kind of take you know, take on board and I will give you those skills as we move forward. And that's that's kind of where that sits. Um, what characteristics do I need to do well in history of art? Obviously, you should enjoy writing, um, developing analytical skills, visiting galleries, looking at architecture, talking, discussing about art um, would be things I would be looking for in potential applicants to the subject and hopefully that's pretty obvious um, if you don't like art this probably isn't the subject for you um, but if you do like art and, and particularly if you enjoy finding out more about art and perhaps you did a GCSE in art and design you don't know whether you want to do the practical or not but you really enjoyed the aspect at GCSE where you were kind of doing more analysis and visual analysis in that kind of subject and that might be something that you thinking actually I really want to push that element and therefore history of art might be more appropriate of course you can do both subjects um, but if you were trying to decide between the two and you weren't sure about the practical that might be a way of thinking about it okay moving on quickly and um, we've got what learning teaching style will be used well I've already mentioned a whole variety I'm very keen for what I call active learning in the classroom this means that you are involved rather than me just delivering dry lectures every lesson which um, I'm sure you'd get bored of quite quickly so I'm very kind of keen to think about or for you to think about how you learn um, and what strategies we put in place to help your learning so we might be thinking about um, little discussions, teaching each other, sharing research, um, maybe mini presentations, quizzes, videos. There's a whole array of stuff that goes on in any one lesson. But as I said, the emphasis is on developing your learning and also your individual confidence in terms of how you talk and think about art. What are the facilities like? Well, we have a a specialist classroom um, with high definition projector and all array of kind of systems to kind of show films etc um, the slideshow obviously now is digital although I still do have a vintage slide collection but I don't pull those out very often um, so obviously most of the kind of the resources are through kind of PowerPoint which are narrated maybe have short videos embedded in them but there's also an array of resources online in our SharePoint site so this is a site where we store a lot of the resources and share them with students um, and there would be kind of notes documents articles the aforementioned PowerPoints, handouts are all kind of stored in one place so you can easily access them or catch up on things if you've missed something as well. OK, um, quick slide about student performance. So you can see there A star to B average is or was 65 percent there with 100 percent pass rate. Um, and as I said, I'm really keen to kind of push you in terms of your learning um, and for you to be as successful as you can be in the subject. So that's a little bit of stats, really, that the, have been added there. And this slide also talks just a little bit about destinations as well. But that gives you the kind of percentage breakdown um, of where students have gone on um, from an art history course. Um, in the past. So hopefully that all makes sense to you. OK, I think I've spoken for long enough. Um, thank you for listening. Um, and as I've said, if you have got any questions, then please do get in touch. OK, thanks very much. I hope that explained a bit more about what an A-level in history of art is and what it can do for you in the future. Thanks for listening.
Bye.